In today's video, we're comparing a Friedman tube amplifier to the IRX preamp pedal to the BEOD Deluxe distortion pedal, just to see how they compare and to see if you can get that signature Friedman sound with each one of these options. Of course, the most expensive option in the bunch would be the full tube amplifier. Now, this is the only Friedman tube amplifier that I currently own. And of course, this is the little version of the Jerry Cantrell signature amplifier. This is the Double J Junior, the 20 watt version with the EL84 power tubes. It's a great little amplifier and I like it a lot. You can check out my full demo and review up here or down here if you're interested, by the way. Now for the gainy rock and metal tones, I always like to use the JBE mode on the Dirty Channel because it has a nice raw character with plenty of gain. And it's just a little bit more saturated and compressed sounding than the normal BE channel. It just has a really nice texture and it fits the mix really well. I tend to use very high gain settings on this amplifier to get the best saturation for my taste. So that's set pretty high as well as the bass control, which is also cranked up all the way for the best bass response in my opinion. So that's also what I'm going to do today. And most of the other settings will be set to around noon-ish. First, we're going to compare the tube amplifier to the IRX preamp pedal, the tube preamp pedal, in fact. Now, the IRX is very interesting and quite new. It's basically a two-channel tube preamp pedal with a bunch of cool features like IR loading and built-in power amp simulation and a built-in boost and all that stuff. So you can run it direct and it will sound like a full tube amplifier basically, or you can also run it into a power amp. I did do a review of this pedal recently on the channel, which you can also check out up here or down here if you're interested. I'm going to use the second channel, so the bottom channel over here with the built-in boost for some extra juice. And I will set the tight switch to the left setting, which I believe is the tightest setting of the two. So that kind of affects the bottom end response. I'm running the Double J Junior into my Red 7 amplification Amp Central reactive load load box and then into an Ohnhammer Rockbox IR in the DAW, which is the V30MV2001A speaker option with the modern three mic mix. And I will use that exact same IR as well as the loader in the DAW for each example in this video. Now the IRX is going direct, so no load box or anything like that is involved. So I'm using the built-in power amp simulation with the presence and thump settings set to the maximum settings. So the built-in IR loader is turned off for this one because I wanted to use the exact same IR loader for each example in this video. My reason for running this direct in this comparison is because I figure that most people will use it that way, at least for recording and for playing at home. For this comparison, I used my Gibson Les Paul Custom on the bridge pickup, by the way. Okay, so let's compare the Double J Junior to the IRX right now. Enjoy.
Interesting. I think they both sound great and they both do that Friedman sound really well. The amp is a little bit more sizzly and raw sounding, a little bit more wild, whereas the IRX sounds a little bit more polished and a little bit more sort of stiff. With the real amp, you can really hear that organic tube response and that sag, especially with those lower notes and lower chords. But yeah, this one also sounds great and it still sounds like a Friedman amplifier. It basically sounds like a different Friedman amplifier, which it literally is. And this obviously isn't an apples to apples comparison. We're just seeing how they sound and how they compare, but the goal isn't to make them sound exactly the same or anything like that. And I also guess that the Double J Jr. is voiced in a specific way to Jerry Cantrell's liking. So that may be also the reason why this one sounds a little bit more wild and rocking, basically. Okay, now I want to compare the Double J Jr. with the same sound and the same settings to the Friedman BEOD Deluxe Distortion Pedal. Now this pedal obviously has no tubes in it, so it's a solid state pedal. So you basically have to run this into an amplifier. Uh, preferably, in my opinion, into a nice sounding clean amplifier. Since I figure that most people who want to use this pedal to get that Friedman sound probably won't have a Friedman amplifier, I'm going to use a different amp for this pedal than the Double J Junior. Because most people who want to use this pedal most likely won't have this amplifier. They'll probably have something else, a good pedal platform amp, for example. So what I'm going to do is use my orange Rocker 15 Terror, this little amplifier over here, on the natural channel. And this is a 15 watt amplifier also with two EL84s in the power section. And my reason for choosing this amplifier is because the natural channel does what it says. It sounds very natural and neutral, so it's great for pedals. And I also think that this amplifier doesn't sound that different from the Double J Junior, to be honest. And I really like to use this amplifier as a pedal platform because the natural channel just sounds really good for that. Now for the pedal, I'm using the green channel, which is the channel with the most amount of gain. Presence is set to zero, and I've set the tight switch over here to the bottom setting, which I believe is the middle setting. When you set it to the top, it gets even tighter, and I prefer it somewhere in the middle. So yeah, and for the orange, I'm using the same load box and the same IR loader and all that stuff. Okay, let's take a listen. So the BEOD is a very cool pedal and it sort of does that Friedman sound, but obviously it does not sound like the full Friedman tube amplifier head, but it still sounds pretty good. It just sounds a little bit more small and sort of sizzly, but yeah, you can definitely hear the difference between the full organic tube saturation and the saturation and overall tone that's coming from this distortion pedal. 
Now, of course, the amplifier that you're going to use for this will have a great impact on the tone. So with each amplifier that you run this into, you're going to get a different type of tone. But I think it sounds pretty great for a distortion pedal, and it does kind of do that Friedman sound. Okay, now I also want to compare the IRX to the setup with the BEOD just to see how they compare. Same settings and same setup as before. Check it out. Cool. As expected, the IRX does sound better here. It just sounds more like a full tube amplifier. And the pedal, the BEOD Deluxe, while it sounds excellent, sounds a bit thinner and a bit more sizzly. So all in all, I think that this comparison went exactly as I was expecting. The full tube amplifier, which is the most expensive option, sounds the best, it sounds the biggest, it sounds the most fat, and it sounds the most rich and organic. The IRX also sounds great and very convincing. It just sounds a little bit different. It sounds a little bit more polished in the top end, and it's a little bit more stiff sounding, in my opinion, but it still sounds great, and I absolutely love this thing. I think it's amazing in its own right, and of course it's also more affordable than the full tube amplifier. And then the most affordable option, the BEOD Deluxe Distortion Pedal, is not the best sounding pedal in this comparison, but it still sounds pretty good, but it's just heavily dependent on which amplifier you run it into. So it might need a little bit of work in order to get the best sound out of it in terms of tweaking and in terms of how you set up the amplifier that you're pushing it into, basically. They all sound great, though, and you can get that Friedman tone out of all of them, basically. But the BEOD especially just has to be carefully matched with a good sounding pedal platform amplifier, basically. That's all for this video. I hope you enjoyed it and that you found it useful. If you enjoyed it, please drop a like and subscribe down below as that really helps the channel out. I'd usually appreciate that. Of course, you can also follow Sonic Drive Studio on Facebook and Instagram. Thank you guys so much for watching and I hope to see you soon. Cheers.